uh, as a generic solution for, you know, as a generic wallet solution that is 100% client side and, uh, and actually runs on IPFS itself. Even the HTML, JavaScript, CSS will be hosted on IPFS. There is no backend, there is no server. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the block, a blockchain would be the, the backend, but uh, we don't want users who just want to authenticate into a DAP to, to have to ever pay transaction fees and things like that, you know, to, to make changes, et cetera. So uh, we've talked to the flow team and it's entirely possible we might use flow as the backend, but I'm not convinced that the best solution yet, but uh, uh, we basically need to identify a blockchain where the transaction costs are somehow hidden from the user. They're just completely abstracted away. Yep. I mean, there's various solutions to that, I think, right? Like, you know, uh, it just depends on the cost of the anchoring, but you know, Ethereum, you have the gas stations and sort of relays like that, where your app can sort of fund on behalf of, um, in ceramic, basically, if your app is running a ceramic node, you are the one that can be basically contracting with uh, an anchoring service um, to sort of drive cost of anchoring down because you can batch you know, hundreds or thousands of updates into a single transaction. Um, and you as the app are basically like running that node, you know, that peer node on behalf of your users. So um, it should be fairly straightforward in that sense um, to, to sort of get that anchoring done. Yeah, the, the challenge is that we don't have an app. We have the authentication solution for the apps. So uh, we want to make that authentication solution not be uh, reliant on the user paying. Uh, Where so, is it? I mean, like if it's not, uh, do you have a UI? Yes, I, I can show you if you like, if, if, if it's still appropriate to do that. But if you want to go into the ceramic call, then... Yeah. Yeah, maybe maybe we start that, and if we might have time at the end, since there's yeah. only you know I think um, you've been on the call, um, but yeah, I, I mean it'd be interesting to explore more. I know you have a call with Danny and Joel tomorrow, I think, right? So I'm sure that there will be ample time to discuss that. Um, but yeah, so I mean this is the the CEA uh, town hall too. Um, some other people may trickle in, but basically um, the rough agenda for today is to introduce new members, which uh, Nick seems like we're, we've already started to do. Um, and we're familiar with uh, Hubin. Um, he's been on all of our calls, is building something interesting. Um, do you want to share any more about that? Okay, so yeah, uh, actually, I'm working on a project. Um, the title of the project is uh, Aquila DB. So what does uh, it actually do is, um, it is a semantic search engine. Uh, so I have my background in machine learning. So I have started working on that in, uh, from a machine learning perspective. So it can be used as uh, a search engine. Um, and uh, when we, um, when we uh, expanded our uh, ideas on that, we found that um, maybe uh, if we can use some blockchain solution, we can scale that to um, some decentralized network uh, so that uh, multiple pe uh, people can contribute data and maybe uh, people can uh, search on uh, that uh, in a decentralized fashion. Uh, so that's the starting point where we have start, uh, started considering the blockchain technology. Um, and um, when we um, when uh, when we started uh, exploring different uh, projects, um, we found uh, ceramic. Uh, so, uh, f what we are expecting from ceramic is that um, if we have some fundamental representations, um, maybe uh, that can be some uh, document representations. Um, that is. Uh, uh, that we can uh, use uh, and which will uh, abstract all the complexities um, that is related to uh, maybe pegging uh, the documents to a blockchain and things like that um, so that we can focus more on uh, the other aspect uh, like machine learning part. 
uh, and we can slowly um, expand our uh, work onto this blockchain field. So that is the basic idea we are currently having. So as I have mentioned, I'm actually uh, very new to this uh, blockchain field. So I'm still uh, exploring stuff and uh, trying out uh, different things around that. Thanks for sharing. Um, yeah. yeah, it's always good to hear what people are building. Um, so um, just sort of jumping right into the agenda, um, the first thing on the topic uh, for discussion today is some share out uh, of progress towards um, the ceramic test net for, or the clay test net for ceramic. Um, and the first piece of that is just, you know, letting the group know that clay test net is unofficially live and, and sort of unofficial because there's still at, on the on the network and protocol level like everything is um, in there and completed and merged that that needs to be um, for quote unquote the official clay test net um, but there's still a bit of work that we're doing um, sort of on the wallet side or the the provider side um, to just make some of that work easier so um, Clay is live. You can build on it. We released a tutorial maybe two weeks ago uh, to help people get started building with that. And we'll be releasing more this week and in the coming weeks um, related to other components uh, of the system. But um, what's left is we need to, um, for it to be official and for us to more broadly like announce Clay is live. Uh, we're working on integrating um, the DID provider uh, interface called 3ID Connect with Ceramic um, in a really simple way. So then if anyone's using um, Ceramic, they could interact with it or let their users interact with it um, through, at first, Ethereum wallets, but but over time and kind of quickly over time with more and more wallets from different uh, Web3 or blockchain ecosystems. Um, so we have Ethereum working uh, on our own branch now. Um, we're working on Near because we're trying to set up that demo uh, for the Hack the Rainbow Hackathon. Um, but it'll be really easy to authenticate and interact with Ceramic using Near wallets. And you know we have plans and are working towards others like Polkadot Flow, um, things like that. So. Um, once that is all officially done and, and sort of merged in, then we'll make a bigger announcement about Clay. Um, but things are progressing really nicely there. Um, and we'll be sharing also more beyond the Clay announcement that, you know, all the remaining pieces left for us to go to mainnet um, in sort of midwinter. Um, but yeah, the roadmap's pretty clear. Now we're just executing on it. Um, any questions there? Nope. All right. Um, so moving on. So next, uh, I'm going to pass to Danny. He has some updates to share uh, with respect to licensing for the ceramic code base. Yep. Uh, this will be very brief. But in the last town hall, there was a lot of people asking about um, IP and contributions. Um, and so for those who watch this in follow up, the update there is basically we've relicensed everything in ceramic to be under both MIT and Apache 2. Um, so projects and devs can use it under either license. Uh, the Apache 2 um, license includes some language that basically ensures anyone who's contributing to ceramic um, is giving up patent claims. And so um, from those we've talked to, including some of the folks in the last call, everybody feels quite comfortable with that um, and doesn't add any friction to the contribution experience and keeps it a pretty open community. So uh, everything in Ceramic is now licensed under MIT and Apache 2. And everything that has been contributed before, all the contributors have um, relicensed it under those too. Better to do early when you need fewer <laughs> agreements to that. Um, cool. Um, 
so Danny, is that implemented across all the repos and libraries and everything already? Should be, yep. Cool. Uh, all right. This is going to be a quick one today, I think. Um, moving on to agenda item number four. Uh, so this is sharing out progress from the three identity working group meetings that we've had since our initial um, CEA town hall. So uh, the identity working group has over the course of three meetings um, sort of evolved from a broad discussion on digital identity and what some of the the right mental models uh, and architectural frameworks might be for implementing such a system in a way that makes it as future-proof, flexible, and sort of reflective of the real-world model of identity as we could get. Um, basically, the, the outcome of those conversations, um, which you can obviously see all the notes to those in GitHub on CEA and then in the folder um, for working groups and identity working group meetings. But um, the outcome of that was just being aware that, you know, it's, it's extremely hard to model identity in any particular way, um, which would make it extremely sort of rigid and, and might not sufficiently solve all of the many use cases that it might need to solve. Um, and, and this is what I'm saying is extremely abstract and these conversations were pretty abstract <laughs> um, at the time as well, but I think important nonetheless to just force or sort of encourage us to think about modeling digital identity in such a way that um, is not restrictive or exclusive of any particular use case or group. Um, and what actually came of those early conversations was were some of the things that we discussed in the identity working group number two, um, where we, we sort of went away, iterated on, on the IDX spec and came back with a new approach. And so IDX is, an abbreviation for identity index. And that's the main, um, one of the primary identity standards that are being implemented on ceramic. Um, and IDX is more or less um, a, an identity centric index of data sets or other resources that might need to be associated with a DID. So you have a DID, uh, that did has a document which specifies public keys for signing and encryption and various other things. Um, and in that did document, you can link to, you can include a reference to uh, an identity index document, which will live on ceramic. Um, and that identity index document basically, um, I can talk about what it is now and then what it was, but an identity index document is um, mappings, a list of mappings from uh, definitions to references. Again, really abstract, but um, when you think about applying it to specific use cases, it becomes more clear. So um, you can think of it like a, a key value store uh, and definitions are, they define what can be found in the reference. And so you can think of a definition basically being created by an app developer saying like, here is the, the data model for my app. Like here's the schema that this is gonna represent. Here's the human readable name of this resource. Here's the, a, a short description of it. Um, and obviously the schema itself is stored in a separate ceramic document. So you sort of have this like linked set of information that when you package it up, becomes a definition. And the, the definition, the key is actually just the doc ID of the definition document. So definitions uh, are in the index and then you have references and references are um, a separate document that include um, either the, um, it basically includes the, the information itself or uh, if that information is in a ceramic document, it's right in the reference, or it can contain metadata for information that's stored on external networks or services. So you, if you wanted to store data on a, a database that you host at an endpoint, or if you wanted to store data in an Ethereum registry on chain, or if you wanted to store data uh, just as a raw file in Filecoin, 
um, you would basically include metadata about where that resource can be found and also some tags to help you categorize or make sense of that information for sort of queryability in the future and discovery. Um, but you know, a lot of times for things like a basic profile or, or resource data resources that you actually just want to store in ceramic documents, you can put them right in the resource. Um, and so you have this way of you know, building a list in an index of all of the data from all of the apps that I interact with. Um, and you also have a way of knowing who created it, what the shape of that data looks like, you know, metadata about it for discovery and indexing. And then you also have pointers to the data, whether the data lives on ceramic or on, on services elsewhere. Um, each of those entries in the index can be encrypted by the user's DID. So just because you add it to the index doesn't mean that it's publicly discoverable and interpretable. Um, basically means that um, everything is in one place, uh, some of which is public and it can be discovered with simple lookups um, and others is encrypted. So you would need user interaction and consent to sort of decrypt that and actually get that data, fetch it and, and you know, perform actions on it. Um, and so this is the, this is the closest, you know, conceptualization that we could come to what identity looks like in a really abstract, flexible model um, where you, where you have basically an identity is defined by all of its things, more or less, whether those things are, you know, linked accounts or um, data resources or, you know, bots or services that can do things like send them messages and notifications um, and their configurations like their settings and uh, verifiable claims and all that sort of stuff. Um, the, and that was like a big change uh, based on the work from the identity working group. Um, before that, um, the index was structured as like a hierarchical set of directories that were a bit more rigid. So you would have like the index and then like a profiles directory and a accounts directory and a data directory and, and other sorts settings directory and all sorts of directories. Um, but that one dealing with nested directories is a bit inflexible. Um, and, you know, really, it's less about what directory anything lives in, but rather just like having a common interface where developers can easily interact with this type of a system. So we sort of replace the directory structure by taking that information and embedding it in metadata in a definition or in the reference. Um, and so that was the outcome of, of working group number two. Um, and before I go on, any questions about um, sort of that, where we were, where we are now, how that model um, might be applicable? I had a question about the definitions. Uh, in terms, you know, so there's a schema and then there's the actual content. Uh, is, is the validation of that guaranteed by Ceramic or is that something the developer has to manage? Yes, yeah, schema validation is handled by the protocol. Okay. Cool. Um, and when you reference a schema, since Ceramic documents can have explicit versions, like every time you anchor an update, it forms a new version that you can actually reference with a canonical path. Um, an immutable path that doesn't change. So when you when you reference a schema, you don't just reference the doc ID, you reference the doc ID and the version. Um, and so that way, even if that schema is updated by the owner, which may or may not be that app developer, like uh, sometimes schemas are reused by multiple apps, but they have one owner or one entity that owns them. You can think of like schema.org, right? Like it's owned by schema.org and a lot of people consume that model. Um, and so even if that canonical schema is updated, you're still referencing the version that is validated by the protocol. Um, and, and so that a lot of that was sort of work in meeting and out of meeting uh, from identity working group number two. Um, and the third one, um, we actually tried to apply IDX to real use cases of people building on ceramic. So it was actually probably the most working group working group of the three. The first one was really conceptual. Second one was iteration on conceptualization of what an index should be structured like and look like. And the third was using it. So we brought together uh, the textile team, the open work labs team and the fleek team 
um, OpenWork Labs and Fleek are both using IDX um, as an identity model for their application, and they want their users to be able to store data and collaborate with other users in textile threads, basically. And those textile threads are hosted, you know, at some endpoint. Um, and so the, it was discussing, you know, what is the definition and what is the reference look like for a textile thread. And there were a few approaches to that. Um, you know, we could, for example, if an app uses 50 textile threads, let's say I have like 50 photo streams or 50 um, documents I'm collaborating on or, or whatever with, with other teammates, I have 50 threads. The question was, with, although they're all within the, the bounds of one application, should those be 50 entries in the index or one entry in the index that maps to 50 resources? Uh, and so that was um, a lot of where that conversation went. I think the, the consensus was to take the more granular approach um, and then find ways to, to logically make sense of that at a higher level, but not bucket too much information in one to keep things sort of um, a separation of concerns uh, and keep things clean. Um, and so that's actually making really good progress. Uh, OpenWork Labs has an implementation of that working where they're using Ceramic and IDX to map to and access control textile threads that live on a server, uh, which is really awesome. Because now, um, you know, the, the interface for that application is, doesn't really matter. The user can sort of take their data and go to another interface uh, and it would still be able to consume the same data uh, and perform operations on those threads. Um, so it sort of was, it's a really clean first example of both how IDX can de-silo information um, via the user and how IDX can integrate with some of the other more promising Web3 technologies. So um, basically like battle testing that Web3 SEC um, and finding some good progress there. Uh, but that was largely meeting three. It was just working group to sort of flesh out all the like schema details and like the, the shape of those definitions and stuff. Um, any questions on any of that? Um, cool. So shared identity index data model update, um, shared progress from integrations. Um, and that's basically brought us to today. Um, so that's been the last five or so weeks um, uh, of sort of identity working group work on ceramic. Um, I think there's another one coming up in, in a week or so. Um, and we'll have to figure out what the agenda of that looks like. But um, as far as working groups within the CEA are concerned, um, the identity working group is the only active one right now. Um, and we sort of wanted to start with one first to just make sure that um, the process is useful, um, you know, that, that this is something that people find valuable. Um, and so it seems like, you know, given the progress and the evolution of identity on ceramics since then, um, it seems that those that are engaging with the process um, are finding it mutually beneficial, both network and for their use case. Um, but sort of just keeping to structure and process for CEA, um, town hall is generally where progress is shared out from working groups. So if there are multiple working groups and multiple streams, everyone comes together and sort of gets on the same page with what's happened over the last period um, since the last CEA town hall and also propose the creation of new working groups. Um, if there's one that someone wants to shepherd, um, they can propose it here. Um, you know, with that proposal should come a charter, basically like what's the objective of this working group? What do we wanna do? Um, what's the meeting schedule? Like how often will this group meet? And then, you know, if the CEA is like, yeah, that's useful, um, then generally just gets added to the CEA calendar. So it's then open for anyone in the CEA to attend and uh, participate in. Um, but so with that, um, you know, the, the three of you that are here, any uh, requests for new working groups?
I haven't been immersed in ceramic long enough to think of it, but I'm sure I can, as I get more into it, I will think of something. Yeah. Um, and I, I think just generally like the process for working groups, which we found is identity is like a little too broad. Um, we wanted it to be broad at first be, and, and then theoretically break up identity into like work streams, sub subgroups. Uh, so I'm sure that there, you know, given what you're working on, there might be some some room for some sort of like sub work, um, which you know, I think we should probably just include as a new working group if that's interesting to you. Um, and really, it doesn't matter the size of the working group. You know, two people, ten people are probably like ideal size. Uh, any bigger than that, it it, it gets a little messy um, and hard to sort of stay focused on exactly the explicit things in the charter. Um, but if those ever come up, yeah, just like let us know um, and, and we can sort of kick some yeah, of that. One thing I can see a potential for is is figuring out, uh, you know, some of the work that is being done with the block certs folks about validation of IDs. Uh, you know, uh, they've done some good work there, but I don't know that they're making good progress. I want to see how potentially the, the the IDs that are stored on ceramic, like is there a way to have an independent mechanism to validate them and things like that you know so okay yeah i think that i have a, i have some questions there i think we can can i already have you on discord we can connect there about that yeah. um I, I did have one question which you might already have answered and it's probably a stupid one but underlying it's ipfs right so how do you guarantee the pinning of the data and you know like the server goes someone turns it off or whatever, like, and it's not pinned or it's not spread to other servers, what happens? Yeah, I mean, a, a thousand percent right now, um, ceramic nodes uh, each run an IPFS node. Um, and so ceramic nodes will, they have like a local store basically where, where it pins the IPFS content. Um, ceramic nodes also have um, configurations for backup so basically like you can configure um, right now, it's not actually releasing the code yet, but it's built and it's working. You can persist that IPFS content that's local on your node um, to a power gate to Filecoin via a power gate instance. Um, and so basically like you can plug one or many backup options in. So you can like back up that, those IPFS CIDs to um, a SQL server, or you can back them up to Arweave or put them wherever else you want. So even if that node goes down, it comes back online, you can get that data back. Um, but also ceramic nodes communicate um, and share updates over PubSub. So um, the only way you would really lose a document is if you are the only one pinning it, or if all the nodes pinning it go down at exactly the same time. Um, because you basically configure in your node which documents you care about. And every document update is shared in this pub sub room. And so any node, like if I care about document um, BAFY, whatever, um, then if there's another node that also cares about it, when my node gets updated, it shares that update with them. And so if my node goes down, it can get that data back. Um, yeah. And all those nodes are locally pending it um, as well. And so, you know, there's in the beginning um, will largely be uh, nodes will be run by need. Like in the beginning, you know, IPFS was run by people that actually needed their content to stay around. And then there were services that, you know, were like, we'll pin your IPFS content for you so you don't have to run nodes. Um, there's also sort of, I, what's the word, altruistic. Uh, just like community driven people that want to support the project um, that will run nodes like, for example, you know, three box will run a bunch of ceramic nodes, uh, especially in the beginning while the network is sort of bootstrapping. Um, Benevolent hosts. Yeah, and, and over time, um, we definitely have a lot of things in mind in this area for like um, incentivizing various parts, um, but it's sort of we want to stand up the infrastructure um and sort of make sure that all of our abstractions and modeling is correct and then we can like introduce other things to really like lock it down thank you sure um so like i said 
this one could be quick. Um, that is sort of, we've covered all the agenda topics, um, no new groups. Um, like I said, if, if you're interested in the identity working group, it should be on this, the CA calendar that you have if you're in this meeting, um, probably next week or the week after, should see it, usually on Tuesdays or Wednesdays, I think. Um, so, you know, maybe, uh, you know, we can end now and give everyone 20 minutes back or we can hang out, uh, answer some questions, um, if that's at all helpful to uh, Jubin, Mark, and um, Nick. Sure, yeah, hey guys, I just wanted to pop in. I know I've been just not in these meetings because they've been so early, I'm on PST, so I've been sort of missing and just getting swamped with things, but uh, I just wanted to sort of check in, see how things are going, and yeah, I'm here if you guys have any ideas for me or you wanna, you know, bug me to jump into a meeting uh, happy to do so i'm just trying to catch up wherever i can so yeah um i think it would be great and and i mean um i'm pretty familiar with the use case but um yeah well i'll try to keep in mind whenever things get a bit more relevant like i think once idx um has an implementation or two uh, and and we feel the models a bit more stable um like live implementations yeah. then then i think there's probably a lot of room to to collaborate there cool yeah just wanted to keep my ear to the ground see how things are going cool yeah i mean a lot of changes i think since you popped in in the cea kickoff right that was like six weeks yep. ago or something. yeah <laughs> exactly uh, i see the website and everything everything's coming along you guys are putting in a lot of good work thanks yeah that that was not a small lift trying to like communicate something new like ceramic uh, is not easy but I mean hopefully it it's helpful I mean we, we were getting a bunch of questions like you know what is ceramic why is it different than x or y what's it what's the closest parallel to ceramic like how does it fit in my conception of data management um, yeah <laughs> it's a lot of mental model building for people yeah, and I mean, and even still, like the network itself is the platform, and then IDX and Identity Index are like a way to use the platform, and so it's like separating. Uh, we'll yeah. we'll actually be releasing the. Um, we built the library that makes it really easy for devs and infrastructure to build with IDX, uh, and like create definitions and create entries in the index and you know, all of that stuff. And so we'll be releasing that pretty soon. Um, the website's like all designed. Now we just need to implement the landing page. Um, but there's like wow. a lot of documentation and stuff around that too. So hopefully the two of those together are like, okay, I can see it now. They're just like, yeah. this is the use case and, and how it actually comes to life for a lot of people early on. And here's like the capability and how they work together. Uh, yeah, that's so, awesome. That's exciting. so many layers. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's been important though. Like we, we definitely learned with three box where we just built like a vertically integrated, simple to drop in thing um, that that's easy to get started, but, but you run into a lot of requests for features or capabilities that like you just can't meet because you don't have enough abstractions. Um, you yeah. know, it's all there. Uh, and so with ceramic, we definitely try to just like pull everything apart super modularly and um, make it extensible. You know, people can add to it, you know, swap this piece out with a different library if you want. Um, and that's taking yeah. it, that's taken us a bit longer to like bring to life, but hopefully the value is realized when, you know, we run into fewer things that people can't do. Yeah, exactly. You get more people in a room, it'll take a little longer, but more people are gonna get what they want, so. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah, I mean, if, if nothing else, um, Let's give the time back. I mean, you all know where to find us on Discord. Um, if you ever want to hop back on, chat about things there, um, we're always open. Awesome. Well, thank you, guys. Have a great rest of your day. Yep. Take care, bro. Thank you, guys. Talk to you tomorrow, Nick. Yep. Bye. Thank you.